I'm here, am I late? Oh, uh, let's see, only 30 minutes. Sorry, I got a little lost on the way here. I have two kids switching here for school next week, and I want to get some more information on Teropolis. Well, I'm the guy you're looking for. I teach history and geography here at Teropolis East High School, and I have lived here for all of my life. Why did you decide to switch schools? Well, I got a job transfer, and my family moved here from New York. We're a little confused. Wow, that's quite a long transfer. I can understand why you're confused. I'd be happy to tell you more. I'm Isaiah, and this is Eric, the city planner. Hi, nice to meet you. In Teropolis, we like to brag about our garbage and energy systems. They both are known around the world for their innovation. Both of them are mostly designed by me. That's pretty cool. But first, so I don't get lost again, what's the layout of the city? Oh yeah, and also, what's the weather like? Well, the weather here is mild with an average temperature of 60 degrees. The area is fairly flat with some little hills. And for the layout, Teropolis is located on the coast of Oregon. It has high density downtown area on the coast and lower density areas as you get farther from the shore. The population is about 105,000. Wow, the layout doesn't sound that confusing. Maybe I won't get lost like next time. So, how does this garbage system work? I'll take this one. In Teropolis, we have a waste collection disposal system that is well known to be friendly to the environment, energy efficient, and improves the quality of life for citizens. When Teropolis was being planned, we wanted to leave less of an impact when disposing of solid waste. It was decided a waste system that would not leave waste in the ground, uses only renewable energy, and would use solid waste as a resource must be used in Teropolis. We managed to meet these goals <clears throat> by the use of a system consisting of an underground vacuum waste collection system, which delivers the trash to either a biodigester, recycling center, center, or a plasma gasification plant. The system is also fully automatic. It sounds really cool. Could you explain it in more detail? It sounds intriguing. Sure. First, a waste inlet center in each user's living area will have three separate labeled inlets for recyclable, biodegradable, and other waste. When waste is put into the inlet, it is bagged with the corresponding color-coded bag. When the bag fills, the waste is released, so the garbage then gets sucked to the, the disposal center. As compressors create a suction, that noise is the model compressor. At the disposal center, the bags are robotically sorted based on the color of the bag. The waste then travels to the appropriate disposal site via conveyor belt. Wow! I was just saying that this means that garbage trucks are no longer needed. <laughs> yep. Removing garbage trucks from the city environment greatly improves the health and safety and reduces traffic jams, air and noise pollution, and pests. One trade-off of the system is the high cost of construction, but the operating cost is fairly low. Cool. What does the biodigester do? The biodigester creates clean burning methane fuel, and fertilizer from organic waste. The inputs include waste from Teropolis and agriculture waste from Teropolis underground farms. In the digesters, anaerobic microorganisms break down the organic matter in the absence of oxygen, which leaves methane and fertilizer. A trade-off of biodigester is the land value nearby being reduced because of the smell. We eliminated this trade-off by putting the biodigesters underground. You, I would not want to live next to that. It does sound pretty cool. What materials does a recycling center accept? We accept plastics, metals, glass, carbon fiber, paper and cardboard, as well as some other items. This waste is sorted by machines based on density, types of light reflected, and other physical properties. From here, recyclables are crushed down, resulting in the output of useful raw materials for Teropolis to sell. Recycling materials, instead of making them from scratch, also uses less energy and valuable resources. So what happens to waste that cannot be recycled or biodigested? In other cities, it just goes into a landfill. Well, in Teropolis, a plasma gasification plant is used. The plasma gasification plant's inputs are non-recyclable and non-organic waste, as well as toxic and medical waste. A plasma arc breaks the waste down into basic elements. After the waste has been broken down, it cools and reforms into syngas and slag. Syngas is then burned to produce electricity. Slag can be used as a substitute for asphalt. The resulting outputs are electricity, CO2 used to improve plant growth, and a substitute for asphalt. One trade-off is the high energy use. That's pretty cool. So the extra garbage is also turned into asphalt, CO2, and building materials? Yep. Teropolis also has a great waste reduction system that practically eliminates food packaging waste. What happens to electronic waste in Teropolis? I heard that it can cause many environmental problems if not disposed of properly. Electronic waste will be handled at a citywide e-waste recycling plant. This reduces the amount of e-waste that is dumped in landfills and allows for the reuse of rare metals. Adding e-waste
waste recycling facility was a hard decision as it is extremely costly and uses a lot of energy. What engineers helped with planning the construction of Heropolis? I would assume building a city this complex would require quite a few. Yeah, quite a few were required. Well, let's see. Civil, mechanical, chemical, computer, geotechnical, and many, many more. Engineers play a crucial role in the construction of not just Heropolis, but every city in the world. For example, mechanical engineers help design the mechanical systems in the vacuum waste collection system and other utilities in Terrapolis. Speaking of electrical engineers, how is power and water produced in Terrapolis? Power is produced with a special type of geothermal plant that does not need to be located in a geothermally active area. This works by using graphene rods that are near perfect conductors of heat. These rods conduct heat from deep down in the earth up to the surface where the heat boils water. The steam then turns a turbine which produces electricity. This is just as clean as previous generations of geothermal power, but can be used anywhere in the world and does not cause an increased amount of earthquakes. Water is produced by using the same graphene geothermal technology. The heat from the graphene rods distills salty seawater, which produces purified water for the city of Terrapolis. This method of water distillation is extremely energy intensive, but it uses geothermal power instead of fossil fuels. When I was driving here, I noticed a cool glass building. What was that? That is our Terrapolis Stadium. It is known all around the nation for its design. It has giant platforms under the ground and they each hold a feel on them. If the field is desired, the platforms will then use cranks and pulleys to come up to field level and lock into place. And then you can play away on that field. It also has stands that are essentially reclinable. In the cold weather, they come up to the indoors and in the hot weather, they move out so the fans can have a great experience. One of the great buildings that I planned and designed. Wow, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to live in the city. You bet. I've lived here pretty long and I enjoyed it quite a bit.